we can broadcast for up to eight hours. We can broadcast for up to eight hours. I hope you guys are here for the long haul. <laughs> Welcome to the Photo Focus Hangout this morning webinar. We are talking about portraiture and travel pictures and using perfectly clear to finish them. My name is Levi Sim. I'm joined today by Aaron Holmstead and Mike Hagen. Hello. And uh, we're glad you guys are here. Folks are tuning in already. I can see some people leaving a note in the chat and you wanna figure out how to do that. Because if you just leave us a note in the chat and say hello, like Steve did from Rhode Island and like Alan and Mama Blue Bear have done, then that automatically enters you in our drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete. And it's powerful software, it's a powerful tool. And we're also giving away Mike's new book, The Enthusiast's Guide to DIY Photography, which I think you should have. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. You'll find the chat is on the right side on the YouTube page. If you are tuning in on photofocus.com, you need to click through and go to youtube.com. Just click on the links in there or click on the video feed itself and it'll bring you over to YouTube where we can get your happy comments and you can ask questions and we can uh, have a good time. So I'm glad you guys are here. People are tuning in from Ottawa. Look, we're international. Wow. It's from Ottawa. Uh, Mike. Oh, there's Mike. <laughs> More Rhode Islanders. We've got... Aisha from Pakistan is tuning in. We are not just international, we're global. All right, interhemispheral. Um, who else? Doug's here from Vancouver. Glenn from Detroit. I love it. Thank you all for coming in. Oh man, I hope you win the book too. Tara Tinsley. <laughs> I'm sorry if I if I slaughter everybody's names. Like Brian, that's a hard one. Uh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know where Brian's tuning in from. And uh, let's see some Californians, some uh, Indianans, Floridians. I'm glad you guys are here. You're going to have fun. Um, again, my name is Levi Sim. Mike Hagan and Aaron Homestead are joining us. The way to enter our drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete, as well as Mike's, or, well, let's do or. Let's do two winners. Yeah. Or Mike's new book. Um, the Enthusiast's Guide to DIY Photography. You just need to leave us a comment over there on the right side, just like Alan in the UK has done. Alan, I hope to come see you next year. I really hope to, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, leave us a comment that'll enter you in the drawing. Let's get into just a quick introduction. Um, let me introduce Aaron to you. This is Aaron Homestead. Erin, hello. You? Um, I'm a portrait beauty um, photographer, so yes. based out of Utah. And you you do all kinds of photography, but you, yes. you get paid for portrait and beauty things. Yes, headshots. I love people's faces, um, but I'm obsessed with photography, so I'll shoot anything. Awesome. So awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited glad to be here. here. Thanks. Yeah. And Aaron and Mike are both authors on photofocus.com as well. So if you've never visited there, as am I, come on over. We teach uh, photography tips and techniques and inspiration several times every day, and it's all free content. So Mike, what do you like to do? Hey, hey everybody, I'm Mike Hagan. Yeah, I've been a photographer for a long time. Been a pro for about 20 years now, and I photograph just about everything under the sun. Uh, for today, I'll be showing a lot of my wildlife and nature photography, and that's one of my passions. I love doing that. It doesn't always pay the bills, and so <laughs> what I do to pay the bills is I do a lot of corporate and commercial photography, and I photograph, let's say, construction sites, architecture, products for advertising and magazines, that type of thing. But, oh, man, I love photographing lions and leopards and cheetah. Oh, oh my. man, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Um, well, a bull fan just tuned in and said, happy holidays, everybody. Yes, happy holidays indeed to everybody. We've got more folks from, from the UK, from California, from Palm Beach, Orlando. Oh, yeah, we already got Brian Moyer in Orlando. Okay, that's why it said Orlando. Thanks, Brian. And uh, I'm glad you all are here. Mike, why don't you so show us some photos? You recently went to Africa. 
which for me is a distant destination, though we might have somebody here tuning in. <laughs> yeah. Totally on my bucket list. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, you want me to get started? Yeah, why don't you take over the screen All right, and, cool. and we'll see what you've got to share with us. And then we'll have you uh, demonstrate for us some things you can do to finish your pictures in perfectly clear. All right, great. Well, let me just show you uh, a few of the photos. Uh, these photos are literally from a few weeks ago. Uh, most of these photos are from a few weeks ago. And I was in Tanzania. I run photo trips to Tanzania every single year, been about 10 years now running in the Serengeti and Ngorogoro Crater and those those fun places. Yeah. You hear uh, that, Aaron? That's insane. We have it, we have it in. <laughs> yes. I, guys, we have yes. It in. Great. I'll hook you up. But uh, let me just show uh, some of the images here. Uh, Levi, is that coming through clearly? Yes, it looks great. Thank you. All right. I'm not going to go full screen. I'll just, you know, what the heck? Let me hit tab here and make these a little bit bigger. All right. So this leopard uh, showed us his, her beautiful face. It was the very last night, and wow. we were getting ready to wrap up the whole entire trip, and we hadn't had a great viewing of a leopard. And uh, we went out specifically to find a leopard that night, and lo and behold, we stalked this gal for quite some time. She was hunting zebra, and she just gazed across and looked right at me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the sun's behind me setting. And I just rattled off a whole bunch of shots. Oh man. Uh, got the shot that I wanted. I was very happy about that. Yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. This little guy is called a serval, a serval cat. And it's about the size of a, a really big house cat. Um, they're, I think they weigh probably 15, 16 pounds, something like that. And they're very hard to find and hard, harder to photograph, but, wow. uh, morning sunrise light beautiful uh this guy was with his mate and she was hiding in the bushes over off to the right that's kind of where he's looking to and uh just really great light great photo great overall experience on this guy that's amazing baby lions everybody oh, loves babies so cute oh my gosh just so adorable and this little boy uh was part of a, a group of three and they they just rolled in the grass in front of us for about an hour one night. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I mean, I literally took, I'm not joking, uh, probably 1,200 photos. <laughs> I had my Nikon on motor drive just, <laughs> I'm like, I can't stop taking these photos. Yeah. So, oh, like, yeah. And I'll show you this one. This will be the first one I work on in perfectly clear. I'll show you how I kind of uh, really help this image pop. Um, another thing when you travel, you know, it's important to take photos of your surrounding, to show context, to help tell that story. And wow. that's one of the things I always try to do is to take my eyes off of the really cool line that's in front of me and just say, okay, where am I at? Where is this in context of planet Earth? So yeah. I always try to show trees and landscapes. That's important for, for all of you traveling photographers. So this is an acacia tree. It's called an umbrella acacia. And uh, that that cool curve on the top is iconic for Tanzania. Yeah, like that that kind of thing. That's what I want to photograph too. <laughs> yeah. And then this elephant, uh, yeah, this is a younger elephant, uh, and she charged us. Oh, wow. And the cool thing about elephants is most of the time, all of their charges are bluffs. They're kind of big bluffs. And so she came running at us and kind of kicking her feet in the dust and bugling. And it was, it was a very cool experience. And so I was able to, to grab that photo. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, that's so this grizzly lion, I like to call him Scar. He's uh, so mangy looking. <laughs> oh, so mangy looking. <laughs> Just his eyes half shut. He's got scars all over his face. Yeah. And he's looking for another male lying out in somewhere in the bush that he heard calling. So he's scanning for his competitors. Some guys don't know when to call it quits, huh? Yeah, exactly. The nice cheetah shot. This was, wow. I actually took this about, I think I took this last year. Oh, just perfect. I mean, just the epic, most perfect pose you could imagine. And in these moments, you know, when you're on these safaris, you're always amazed, but then every once in a while you get the pose, you know, this is, the blue steel, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. And another one of those great poses in the morning there. This is from the Serengeti, this beautiful male lion, just fantastic. So, wow. 
and there are some images that I've that I've taken here in in the Serengeti and in, in Tanzania, and let me show you how I work on those, and uh, and then I'll bring it uh, into perfectly clear to finish it off. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I I showed you the finished photos. I'm going to unfilter these, and um, I'm in I'm using Lightroom right now, so that's important to know is that. If you haven't used Perfectly Clear before, it can work as a standalone application, or it can also work as a Lightroom plugin, okay? And so today I'll be showing it as a Lightroom plugin. So let me show you these two images. I'm gonna, I'm hitting the letter C for compare. Compare shows kind of the before and after. The image that's on the left is what I would call the before image. That's what I worked on in Lightroom. And then the image on the right is after perfectly clear. And one of the reasons I like perfectly clear is because uh, it does a really good job of adding warmth and what I would call ambiance to my images. Yeah. Um, I really like the warmer feel, especially for my African foot photography. Uh, just that sunshine, the savanna, the grasses. And so I find perfectly clear does a really good job warming my images up. I think it does a better job than I have done in Lightroom. So, so what I typically do is I, here's the photo. You can see if you can read this on your guys' screens at home, you can see that here's my image name and it just says .nef. NEF is a raw file. It's a Nikon raw file. So that's the indicator to you that this is kind of my original image. I'm going to go to my develop panel. That's up here in the upper right. Okay. You can also, I'm going to click on the word develop. You can also type the letter D on your keyboard and that will bring you to your develop module. You can see here on the right side, I have made a bunch of changes and adjustments to that photo. And that's the way I like to work. I like to kind of start and do a lot of my raw adjustments inside of Lightroom. And then I'll take it off and go over to perfectly clear to finish it off. Real quick here though, let me just show you the original so did that change oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. all right so there's that's straight out of camera that's the raw file right out of my nikon d850 the lens i used was my 200 to 500 millimeter lens it's kind of a i went with a less expensive lens this year to tanzania just to try it out i got all those expensive ex big honking lenses but this year i wanted to go a little bit lighter so anyways worked well looked like it yeah, yeah worked well so you can see i Reduce the highlights. That's real common for me. I increased the shadows. I added a little bit of clarity, a bit of vibrance. And now I'm going to take it over to perfectly clear and finish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to choose edit in. And then here we go. Edit in perfectly clear complete. And then LR is the, the Lightroom plugin. When that happens, you get a chance. You get to choose a little bit of uh, around how you want to send that off to Perfectly Clear, and I recommend sending off the highest quality image over to Perfectly Clear. So you get all of the all of the bit depth, all of the, the shadow detail. You can work on all that in Perfectly Clear. So I recommend a TIFF. I send it over in Adobe RGB. I send it over in 16 bits per channel, and then this is not as important, but 240 uh, pixels per inch. So here we go. Now I click Edit. Off to perfectly clear, and now the plugin will fire up. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, this this has created a new TIFF file, so it's not your your original raw file is not being affected right now. Exactly. That's yep. Yeah, that's good to know. For those of you who like to work non-destructively or who like to um, pr preserve the original. That's what all these plugins do for us. So, um, I like the term non-destructible. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Non-destructive editing. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. So this photo, um, when you first open up your image in perfectly clear, uh, when you first open an image in perfectly clear, it basically remembers the previous settings that you had on the last image. So already right out of the bat, I'm looking at this going, this looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm liking it. And I'm like, why is it so good? Oh, yeah, because I worked on another image before this, and I kind of had all my sliders. When I work with Perfectly Clear, um, I think I'm like Levi a lot of times from the standpoint that Perfectly Clear has all of these presets on the left-hand side. 
And you can use them and they can almost be a, a click and done type of a solution for you. They're, they're pretty, right. but I'm a fiddler. <laughs> I'm like the guy. I like to know exactly what's going on and I know what I like about my imagery. So a lot of times maybe I will start with something like maybe intelligent auto. Let me just click on that real quick. And intelligent auto generally does a, a fairly, what I would say a fairly benign adjustment. Uh, it's not too aggressive. It's relatively gentle. Maybe I'll start there and then move over to the right side and start adjusting my other sliders. In this case, Man, I'm going to hit um, undo. I just hit Command-Z or Control-Z if you're a Windows user. I'm going to go back to where I started. And you can see over here on the right, the last photo I did, I made a bunch of slider adjustments to things like maybe the black point, things like depth, things like color vibrancy and fidelity. I'm just going to talk through those really quick. And then I want to show you one cool little trick before I hand the, the webinar off to Aaron, one cool little trip for eye, eyes, okay? So this photo, uh, I usually, or actually for most of my wildlife photography, I actually start over here in the tone area. And with tone, I, I maybe will adjust the, the depth slider. And if I move the depth slider all the way to the left, let it render here, move it all the way to the right, oops. Sorry, mouse clicking. There we go. Move it all the way right. There we go. You see what depth does? Depth is almost like a clarity adjustment in Lightroom. I don't know if you've used clarity before, but it's like a local contrast type of a, of a tool. I usually set the depth slider somewhere around 10 to 30, somewhere in that range. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting and perfectly clear. It's not um, like 10 or 30 on this picture won't necessarily yield the same results on a different picture because it it's analyzing the picture individually and and makes an intelligent adjustment it's man it, it's cool that way yeah and that's one thing i think if you're watching today and you're wondering you know what's going on behind the scenes well they're the perfectly clear engineering team and the scientist team they've done a lot of work with um with automation i mean that's really where this um, succeeds and so a lot of these adjustments aren't like hard adjustments for they're taking it what I mean by that is not like maybe Lightroom or it's just taking clarity right. and just uh, uh, moving it left and right no there's an intelligence behind these sliders which I think is really cool the next slider adjustment I usually make is light diffusion and I'm not to be honest with you guys I'm not super clear on exactly what light diffusion is adjusting but I'm here to tell you I like it. All yeah. Right? <laughs> and so I'll usually move this slider all the way to the left, and then I'll move it, and I'll look at it and go, mm, okay, and then I'll move it all the way to the right. Um, and I don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes, but I like the result. And for this photo, and this photo only, I'm going to leave it around 70, 75, somewhere in that range, okay? All right, next is Fidelity and color vibrancy. These two um, I like to use. I don't recommend uh, color restore. In fact, uh, my partner in crime here, Levi, told me the other day, eh, color restore, you gotta be careful with. It's more like, what did you hey say? It's more like a, yeah. <laughs> I love me some yeah, color restore. Yeah. Oh, you do, Aaron? <laughs> I do, strokes, yes, right? I do. <laughs> All right. Well, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, that's right. And that's the cool thing about all of this stuff is there's no one answer ever. Right. But it, it's got a lot of contrast and, and yes. color alteration. And, and like if, you, if you're working on a, if you're trying to restore an old photograph, like a 1984 picture that's been in the shoebox, it might be a great way to get some color and, and power back into it. Wonderful. Well, Aaron, I can't wait to see how you use it. <laughs> so far, I will be using it. So, right. yes. All right, so I added a little bit of color vibrancy. And again, this is an intelligent tool. It's not like a saturation slider. It's basically looking at the, the colors in your scene that aren't quite as vibrant, and it's finding those and amping them up a little bit. As with all color adjustments, you gotta be careful so it doesn't turn into a Disney scene. Uh, so <laughs> something in the 20-ish range there. And then fidelity, I usually, I usually ramp that up a little bit. All right, so now I look at this photo, I'm gonna click down on my mouse. So I click down and you can see that goes to the 
first original state. And now I unclick and you can kind of go in between those two cases. And I just make sure I haven't gone over the top. And then if I want to compare them side by side, I move my mouse to the upper left of the screen here. And there's something called the dual image view. I click on that and I like to show them side by side. Again, just to make sure I haven't gone off the rails. <laughs> yeah, good call. All right, so we'll call that good for now. Now the next thing is, I wanna show you a little eye trick. Now Aaron's gonna show you the eye stuff on portraiture, but I just wanna show you, you can use eyes on lions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so my, great idea. All right, so this is kind of fun. There's a face selection, a face detection tool over here, and it's really used to find faces on people, and it works great. But in this case, there's no people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click manually add face. And now it basically allows me to go out here and drop a little, little eyedropper tool. That's the wrong, the wrong name for it. But basically I can identify the eyeballs just like that. And Mike, I was gonna tell you real quick. Start from the left. This, this is a, a thing we might wanna help them adjust the copy on. It says click the left eye and then the right eye. Yes. They mean your left. Yes. And your, yeah, we figured this <laughs> out, right, Aaron? Because suddenly it starts doing the dark circle adjustments and removing eyebrows. It's on, yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and I realized right as I clicked that, I clicked on the wrong eyeball. So Yeah, like it says, click the left eye, which to me means their left. But, uh, All right, yeah. so I'm going to click on my left. That's it. <laughs> there we go. And there we go. Here. Cool. In, in this picture, it probably wouldn't matter because you're not going to be right. using the, the uh, face slimming and the... <laughs> <laughs> the dark circles, but <laughs> exactly. All right. So what we have now is those little yellow dots to indicate where the eyeballs all are. There's a button here or a click box that says show and adjust control points. I don't want to show them when I'm making the adjustment because it's hard to see what I'm doing. Now, the only slider I use down here. I, I'm sorry, Mike, I distracted you because yep. you didn't press apply apply yet. There you go. <laughs> sorry. The only slider I use down here is the eye enhance slider. The other ones don't necessarily don't work very well actually on, on wild. <laughs> but this eye enhance slider works great. So I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna zoom into 100% here. This is so cool. And um, now I've just moved that eye enhance slider up until I'm pleased with the results. And the, the rendering time here takes a little bit here. But let me go all the way to the top there we go. That's that's over the top. That's that's just too much, right? And so I've found for most of my lions and tigers and bears, <laughs> the, I don't know, the 20 to 50 range makes a lot of sense. So we'll call that good. I'm going to click out here, go back to regular zoom. And now I'm going to mouse down on the screen. There's before. And then I'll let up. There's after. Just subtle there on the eyes, but I really like the warmth and the colors. And I'm done. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So adorable. <laughs> save, and that saves it back into Lightroom as a new TIFF file in my catalog. So there you have it, baby lion. <laughs> nice job, Mike. Cool. Nice job indeed. I love, uh, I love that you use the face detection on a non-human. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a a four-legged critter instead of a uh, all right i'm gonna unshare my screen perfect and well thanks and and uh, as a reminder to everybody who's just tuning in if you'll use the chat on the right side of your youtube window you can leave a comment which enters you in a drawing for a copy of perfectly clear complete as well as mike's new book the enthusiast's guide to diy photography from rocky nook and uh, so just leave us a comment like uh, Guadalupe has done. Hello from San Antonio, she sa or Olaf from San Antonio, she says. And Bob is in Colorado. That's my home state. Shadow Hunter, no, no snow photos in, in Tanzania. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it ever snows in Tanzania. I don't know that. <laughs> it snows on the top of uh, Kilimanjaro. Yes, right. Oh, and Sale has a question. Could you explain mouse down? He just means he was clicking on his mouse button which shows you before and after when you're using Perfectly Clear. That's a great question. If anybody else has any other questions, please leave a comment and we'll uh, we'll ask Mike and Aaron live. And Aaron, let's turn this presentation time over to you uh, to show us some portrait magic. 
Hello. Yes. So let me do my screen share. Carlos is tuning in from the Emerald City with you there, Mike. <laughs> Okay, so um, like I said, I am a, mainly I would say I'm a portrait photographer, um, but that kind of varies on what I do. Um, so we're gonna show how I immediately use Perfectly Clear for this. So um, this particular image, I was shooting for um, some commercial work for Paul Mitchell. I work a lot with makeup artists and hairstylists, um, showing their work, building up their portfolio and photographing that for them. Um, so I actually jump right in to Perfectly Clear. You kind of saw how Mike did that. So I'm just gonna jump right in here. Um, I'll explain this, the lighting of this image real quick. I used um, a pro photo with a softbox directly behind my model here to create this blown out high key kind of effect um, and get a really solid white background. Um, right and then I used a beauty dish in the front with a reflector um, kind of about waist level. I was, the look we were going for was really kind of like a ice queen, um, blue hue goddess, I guess you would say in a sense. <laughs> um, but two of my First, let me say why I love Perfectly Clear is because since I do so much with people's faces, the face recognition and tweaking to fit kind of each individual is just phenomenal. So um, for my beauty, I'm usually always using these top two, either Beauty or Beauty Plus. Um, and so we're going to start with Beauty Plus um, on this one. And immediately you can just kind of see what it did for the skin there, really yep. kind of smoothed everything out. Now, um, I'm gonna come over here and start in the to tone section. I'm gonna remove the exposure because I really like the in-camera exposure that I was able to achieve on that. Um, but I am gonna do a little bit of depth, just a little bit, let's go a little bit higher on that. You might have to activate like one on exposure to see anything from depth. Oh, like set it like activate it and then set it all the way down, and then you'll see the depth effect. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, there we go. Just slightly a little bit of a contrast fill. Um, I'm also gonna do the turn light diffusion. So what I feel like light diffusion does is I feel like it downplays highlights. Yeah. Um, especially with makeup and under like where they the highlighting aspects of what a makeup artist does, which is usually in the T zone area. Um, and so I'm actually going to turn that off because I don't want much color. I'm really kind of going for a blue, purpley, huey, washed out skin tone, I guess. Um, I would say, okay, so this is, as you can tell, let me explain this too for a sec. Yeah. Why there's so what many- going on with this picture? Why, why there's so many eyes. Um, I shot this with a, a fractal from Get Fractal. Uh, it's a prism that you hold in front of your lens and it creates um, this effect and I really, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to use when I'm kind of doing some beauty shots. But the thing I love is I'm going to turn on these show adjustment points like Mike talked about previously, and it already recognized the like correct eyes. <laughs> um, and that to me is just phenomenal. And so I'm just going to tweak it ever so slightly so it's right up here um, and then turn those off. I'm going to come down here to the eye section. I I love me the eye section, okay? Um, I'm just gonna, already the adjustments. Okay, so what I'm noticing immediately is, I'm usually a fan of the dark circle slider. However, in this case, we have so much makeup on the under side of the eye that I need to turn that off so I don't start to wash out the makeup or the eyelashes 
um, and you're still able to see the work of the artist um, in this. Uh, let's see, but I am going to do a little bit more. We'll go dramatic for the sake of it. Look at that. Yeah. That I just, is gorgeous. It's beautiful. I obviously, I think 100 is a little much, so we'll, we'll tone that down. But ooh, maybe that's not enough now. Go back. <clears throat> Yes. Oh, that's looking fantastic. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot. Hello, we just talked about it and I'm passing it up. Color restore in this case. A little yeah. much, right? <laughs> yeah, you that contrast. Yes. I mean I'm in yeah, I, I could see I can see where in the in the right picture you would love that. Well, I mean that's just so set at one for the light look, yeah. That's only, I mean, I barely put that at a one. And mm -hmm. look at the difference that made. Awesome. I just feel like it kind of gives everything a real, a real kind of harsh pop, but sometimes it works. And in this case, I definitely feel like it does. Um, <laughs> while we're here, I'm going to add some fidelity. I'm actually going to do the vivid um, just to kind of, really pop those colors, get the white out, re reduce the skin tone that we've got going on in there. Yeah, okay. the fidelity is really powerful on the blues and purples. Yes. So I feel like that just, ooh, I'm loving it. Okay, I'm going to come down here to the face section. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take the face contouring off. It's not really making any effect well, yeah, it, it kind of is. That it could. <laughs> it could, but I'm not wanting it to look like that because we've kind of got the fractal thing going on. And I'm also going to remove the teeth whitening because we can't see her teeth at the moment. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, come down here and work in the skin section. Uh, this is a huge thing for me when I'm shooting portraits. I'm usually always in this in the eye section of Perfectly Clear. Um, I'm going to... Her skin is pretty smooth. They covered her with quite a bit of some <laughs> real light makeup in there. So, which did a, they did a fantastic job. But what I'm noticing here is I'm going to turn this up really dramatically. The smooth section is it's I'm losing some of the detail that I loved, kind of with the double face look right down the center. If I turn that on and off you can kind of see that everything is a little blurred together. I don't want it to be too blurred, so I'm actually going to just keep that completely off um, for right now. The blemish removal, um, she didn't have a whole lot of blemishes except for kind of in a, one or two in this little area right here. Um, but when I turn it all the way up, it actually starts to think that these lips the reflection of the lips are kind of a a blemish because it's it's like I said when we did the two eyes when we set it to the two wide eyes it thinks everything in the middle you know is not another face mm -hmm. so I'm going to drop that back down and then I would go in outside of this and go and zap those um, the infrared here infrared removal obviously is going to take away um, red and depending on where it's taking away I want to kind of leave it because I'm loving the purpley pink okay so I can notice if you can see a lot is happening on this ear right yeah here. it often has a strong effect reducing the the yes. light standing through ears that makes them appear red so we'll go ahead and leave that off because I feel like that kind of keeps the ear with the skin tone of everything mm -hmm. else that we're going on um shine removal i love me some shine people um you like shiny i do like shiny especially in beauty you know it adds a great texture to skin in this photo necessarily it's not really having much of effect because there's kind of so much going on right um but i do love me some shiny it, it goes along with highlighting faces kind of what makeup artists do and it's all i always think it's very flattering mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, and and you might find different results. Like when I photograph, you know, my own family or something, and we've got highlights, it can it can do a great job of mitigating the the impact of those. But yeah, where you're intentionally looking for highlighted skin. Yeah, you kind of want to leave it. Um, so, okay, the great thing that I love about Perfectly Clear is not only have I, like, totally, you know, made the makeup. Let's do this little slider right here. So you can already kind of oh. see it before and after. Yeah, it sneaks up on you how potent the changes are. Yes. Um, but I'm not quite done because, like I said, I was really going for kind of like an ice queen blue um, thing. So the thing I love is down here they in this right right bottom hand section is this finishing tool section and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mess around with the color temperature and just ever so slightly oh yeah and really go for that ice queen yeah. kind of blue purple uh, vibe I'm going to add in some tint so I can get a little bit of the pink, purple, and then I'm going to drop my shadows down, just add a little bit of contrast. And wherever you set that, the great thing is, is this top one right here is a blend. So it really takes what you had before, what you're wanting to apply, and you can blend those together to get kind of a happy balance oh, that's cool. of your whole overall feel. But I'm going to go extreme on this because... I feel like the image needs it. Hey, Aaron, I have a question. You, you're using your shadow slider and reducing that a little bit. Do you find, are you using that more frequently than maybe your black point adjustment up in the tone area? Yes. Um, well, yes and no, I guess. Um, sometimes I feel like the black point um, affects, I mean, well, let's just turn it on. Go all the way. I feel like sometimes it does funky things to black makeup or... Um, and this one, it's not really doing kind of a whole lot for me. Yeah. Um, but I sometimes feel like it... The makeup part is what kind of throws me off with the black point. Only on, on certain images, I should say. Okay. Um. Yeah. But the shadows don't necessarily really affect the makeup-ish sometimes. Mm. At least that's, you know, personal opinion. But anyway, so once again, I just, oh, let's turn that back on so you can see before and after. Yeah, that's I awesome. mean, come on. <laughs> oh, Aaron, it's would you incredible how to save this as a preset because you've got other pictures from the same shoot. Yes. 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 So we're going to come. Okay. So everything's good here. Okay. I just want to make sure. So as you can see down here, I kind of have some of my other little presets that I've done. Um, but if I want to do a preset, Oh, sorry. They moved it to the top up there. Did they? Okay, wait. I'm like... Yeah. That wait. setting wheel. That, no, oh, that's the one. Okay. Yep. I'm like, wait. It used to be... Um, okay. Add or edit preset. I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to... We'll do PM Paul Mitchell Fractal. Um, I want it to go under my presets. And then I could do, I don't know, white... I'll do the lady's name, the makeup artist, something to kind of help me remember specifically what this preset is for. And then when I save it, it's right down here. So the next time I want to go in and batch edit all of those images from that shoot, it's already done right there. Just click this export and save and we're good to go. And Perfect. look at it. It's so incredible. <laughs> I get over it. So um, that's how I kind of, I mean, I do um, start in Lightroom because I um, use Lightroom for, you know, my cataloging and kind of organization. <clears throat> but um, I'm a perfectly clear person. 
sometimes start to finish all the way. So right <laughs> um, these are quickly some of the other images that I have used perfectly clear for. Um, so, I mean, yes, I do shoot a lot of portraits and faces, um, but I love taking photos of wherever I'm at and whatever I'm doing and my little kiddos as well. So awesome. Thanks, yeah. Aaron. Thank Thanks you. Oh, we have a few questions. Let, sure. me, let me address some questions here. Let's see. How do you clear all adjustments when you first enter PC from Eric? That's a great question, Eric. And I do that personally every time. And so what I've done, there's two ways to do it. At the top, there's a slider for strength. And you can just move that strength slider all the way to the zero. And that'll set everything. That'll disable everything. Or I've gone through and I've, I've set everything to zero manually. And then I've saved a preset called zero. And that's that's what I click on first when I bring a portrait into Perfectly Clear or or a landscape, whatever picture I'm working on. Um, so I've saved my own zero preset. And then let's see, got more folks tuning in from around the world. Denton, North Carolina, Calgary, yes. Um, after exporting your edited image, this is a, a question from Jorge. After exporting your edited image to LR, how can import how can you import again? To piece it perfectly clear zero out all the uh, other adjustments just apply a look back in lr you'll have the original first edited image and image with a pc look applied and the pc looks be imported into lightroom and used directly in lightroom oh that's a that's a good question so i think jorge that you might um and this, this is a little beyond the scope of our of our talk today, but let me show you real quick a, a super simple way to edit from Lightroom without having to actually go into Perfectly Clear. And what you can do is when you're in Lightroom, where's a, a good picture to show you? <laughs> the wrong picture's up. Here we go. Uh, when you're in Lightroom, if you choose, instead of choosing Edit In, instead, if you go to the Export dialog, and switch this from hard drive down to perfectly clear complete then now you get an added tab right up here and you can choose whatever preset you'd like to to use on those pictures so i could choose for instance my zeroed preset and what and then when you hit export this will go out to perfectly clear and automatically come back to lightroom and you won't even have to make any adjustments in perfectly clear to get your picture done and you can do it on 700 pictures at once or two pictures at once. And uh, it's a really powerful way to batch process your photos. And so I, I'm not sure if that answered your question just right, but uh, I hope it did. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see, another question. Glenn asked if there are any updates coming up. Yes, Glenn, there was just a big update. I think we're on 3.6, like that whole um, if, if you're not on perfectly clear, complete version 3.5 or newer, there are some significant updates like that whole uh, finished processing that Aaron was using at the end there. That's all new. And then several new priests and uh, lots of different things. In fact, I just checked mine and it says I've got an update to do. So there are frequently <laughs> free updates and there are also frequently paid upgrades. So... If you don't have 3.5 or newer, that's a significant upgrade for you. So, so check into that through your apps manager. Um, and then everybody else, leave us a, a question over here to uh, enter yourself in the drawing or not even a question, you just say hello. Leave a comment and we'll enter you in the drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete and also Mike's new book, The Enthusiast's Guide to DIY Photography. And Mike, I think we've got enough time. If you want to just another quick... Uh, can I... Oh, sorry. Can I do something real quick? Yes. Okay, so this is the fractal. Oh, yes. Thank you. This is this is the thing Aaron used to photograph that last portrait. So... Brass knuckle. Brass knuckle. Hold <laughs> it right in front of your lens right there. Um, it comes in... They have these, like, crazy... Comes in three. A kit of three. That's cool. 
And Mike, yeah. you've, you've done classes on using similar things like that, but but more DIY options. DIY, totally, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I, have, I have had some DIY things, but the brass knuckle, like the grip system <laughs> on these suckers, Awesome. Like it's so easy to use, huh? Someone comes up, you could just no, just kidding. <laughs> Club them with it. And what's their what's their Instagram? Get fractal. Get fractal. That's cool. Check those out, folks. Yeah, people are interested. Um, Mike. Yes. Show us some magic. All right, real quick. Uh, I showed you a wildlife. Uh, fix. I want to show you real quick a landscape photo and just show you how perfectly clear it can take that from blah to hurrah. And I, <laughs> I just totally made it up. Blah to hurrah. Okay. All right. So I've got this photo here in, uh, in perfectly clear. I've already loaded it in. And I just want to show you a couple of quick, quick things uh, to think about over here on the slider land. I zeroed everything out using Levi's uh, suggestion, which is go up here to the strength slider, bring that all the way down to zero, and then that zeroes all of your sliders out down below. I usually start out with depth, hit, hit these photos with a little bit of depth. All right, so we'll just do that here. Light diffusion, I mentioned earlier, I liked light diffusion for my wildlife. I also love it for my landscapes, especially trees. I'm gonna ramp this up a little bit here. And you can see as I move it off to the right, oh we're getting some really tremendous colors coming out. Uh, I don't, I very rarely use a hundred on any slider in any software. And in this case, I'll probably keep it right around 70 or 80, we'll do that. Now I'm gonna go down to color. I like color vibrancy, so I'm gonna click that on. I'm gonna add some color back into this photo. Add a little bit of fidelity. There we go, fidelity up. There we go. Now this image is really starting to sing. I'm liking it a lot. Now the last two things I want to show you here before we call it good on this photo are these two areas here. One is called Sky Enhance and the other is called Foliage Enhance. you got to be careful with these because they can hit your photo with a big honking color club. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to click Sky Enhance and when I do, um, I'm just gonna go kind of extreme here just to show you what not to do. So in Sky Enhance, there's basically five, or I'm sorry, six preset, what I will call color groups or genres. I generally like this Cerulean, Cerulean, Cerulean. Cerulean. Yeah, Cerulean. We'll with that. I usually go with something with that and then bring the slider down to somewhere around 10 to 15. That's all you need. And then the foliage enhance, fantastic. Now I've used a lot of plugins over the years. I've used all kinds of different software and um, I really like what the perfectly clear is done with the foliage enhance. But like all tools, you have to be super careful. So the first one is you've got basically your greens, that's the top one. And then you've got your warmer tones down below. This allows you to adjust both independent from each other. Maximum green does just exactly what it says. It gives you the maximum green. But if you shoot maybe in somewhere like a tropical forest or maybe in the Northwest where I'm from, I'm from the Seattle area, maybe you wanna choose something a little bit more like an evergreen, you know, pick your, pick your poison. But I'm just gonna choose maximum green for now. And I've moved this slider up to about 10. And if I move it down to zero, well, it's hard to see. It didn't make a whole lot of change and that's good. You want all of your changes to be subtle. Yeah, you don't want to go fluorescent green suddenly. Exactly. <laughs> Down below, we've got our warm tones, and uh, there's a whole bunch of choices here. There's mahogany, burnt sienna, sepia, clay, autumn. Um, generally, I'm finding that I'm liking something between the mahogany and the burnt sienna. But what I want to point out here is if you're not careful, you will mess up your Serengeti grasses. <laughs> right. So mm -hmm. I if I zoom in, I'm going to zoom in down here. And you can see that it just kind of goes, the saturation kills the detail, I think is the right way to say this. So if you do, uh, if you have a lot of warmer grasses, you got to be careful about that warm, that warm. Oh, there you go. So yeah. I'm just down in like, like level two, which I think is about right. 
Okay, let me show you before and after. I'll just put them side by side. Look at that. Wow. I love yeah. it. That's awesome. So that's what I have. That's a great one. Aaron, I think we've got one more time for, for one more super quick one on a portrait. Okay, sweet. Let me. What do you want to do? I think I'll do Bob. Bob, excellent. And Carlos is tuning in from Mexico. So, welcome. hey, Carlos. Okay, I'm going to quickly pull this in. This is my dear friend Bob. Um, <laughs> I was teaching a class here for some photographers and I needed a stand in to test out my light. Uh, so, he was gracious enough to do that for me. I think Levi likes Bob's hat. I do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Bob and I are also friends. <laughs> He's so great. I like everything about Bob. <laughs> okay, so one thing, like I said, I love that Perfectly Clear does faces, but they have a ton of great features for women um, in the beauty aspect, but they also have some fantastic presets for men. Um, this one down here in the left, middle-aged, um, is just it's so great for um, people that are getting older. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to come in here under the tone, turn the exposure to low mm. slightly. I'm going to go kind of fast on this so we can hopefully yeah. Yeah. see the whole thing. Everybody, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch this again. And oh, that's great. And things that they're doing quickly. I'm going to check my eye section, see where my thing. The great thing about this is that you can move these eyes, these little eye dots around to get them where you want. Um, I'm going to turn on my eye enhancer and my dark circles. Um, zoom in here for just a minute so we can see. Obviously, we'll go extreme. OK, a little crazy there, right? But we want Bob to look the best Bob. We don't want to completely eliminate his dark circles because that wouldn't look like Bob. Um, but we just want to lighten them up. I mean, it kept yeah. it kept all the texture and I yeah. dare say wrinkles if he's on here, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? It kept that, but just slightly downplayed it and didn't make that be the focus. And I really want the eyes to be the focus because his eyes are so striking. So I'm going to do the eye enhancer on him as well. Um, get somewhere just in there. Yeah. That's looking great. OK, um, I'm going to come down here. I'm not going to do some base contouring or teeth whitening on him. They have this uh, slider, what's the lip sharpening slider right here. Um, I'll go extreme for that so you can just kind of see what it does. Brings in detail. As you get older, I feel like you you kind of lose the shape and the structure of your lips a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm loving that you're able to do this. You want to be careful, though, on the power of it because with men with goatees or beards, it will start to affect um, as you can see, we'll zoom in really closely for that. It will also bring out some of the detail of, you know, the hair. And we don't want that Double to look around the edges, huh? Yeah, yeah, just the even, you know, I mean, girls have, you know, hair around their lips, too. So, I mean, <laughs> it just each time you just want to be a little careful of what that actually is sharpening. If there is no fine definition between their lip. Um, OK, so. I'm loving that. Let's come down here and work with his skin. So Bob has a lot of skin natural, or excuse me, a lot of skin. Of course he has a lot of skin, but <laughs> um, sorry about that. He has a lot of red in his skin. So this infrared removal slider is fantastic. We'll go ahead and crank that all the way up just so you can. Oh, that's incredible. See yeah. that. Um, obviously, if you go, you know, never. I don't recommend, I don't use things at 100%, but um, it made him look a little too ghostly. So we'll we'll kind of drop that down and see. And just, I mean, no one has perfect skin, but definitely when you're older, your skin is, you know, showing some age and some, how does the correct worm wear and tear? <laughs> we still are distracting from those eyes. Yeah, we don't want it to be the feature of what you see when you talk to him. Um, maybe even a little less on the infrared. There okay. 
Now, the next thing that people are going to, that I thought was so crazy was they, on the rugged middle or the middle age filter, excuse me, they actually add blush. Now, I know this sounds crazy and Bob's going to, if he's watching, he's going to say, you put makeup on me. Um, but it just, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. It is so subtle. Watch kind of right here in this section. Can you see? It's very, very subtle. Yeah, it just gives a, a tiny bit of color back to his cheeks. Without... Just a little bit of a pinch. Like, I just pinched his cheeks right before I took the photo. Um, it's so subtle, and yet I absolutely love it. Just kind of gives, like, a rosy cheek, cheek vibe. That's awesome. A cheek vibe. Yep. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, as you can see... It's perfect. Didn't mess with the hat. It kept all my blacks um, the same and just. Yeah, it just gives us some, let's see. some lightning in the important parts. And well, That's great. Thanks, Aaron. So you can do beautiful men portraits too. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right, we are wrapping up things here. This is your very last chance to enter our drawings. I am ready to draw for Mike's new book, The Enthusiast's Guide to DIY Photography. What kind of stuff do you cover in there, Mike? Yeah, real quick. So this uh, book, we have uh, 60 some sixty something projects, um, all sorts of things from supporting your cameras with ski poles to making your own bean bags to uh, you. <laughs> projectors to create interesting backdrops um, all the way to your own lighting modifications and your lighting equipment. In fact, I have one right here. Hold on. I have one right here I made with the salad bowl. So yes, I have one of those. Beauty dish. Yes. Huh? Right? So making all of your own lighting equipment, you name it. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, I've done all kinds of uh, training uh, with lots of different organizations and this last year i kind of focused on diy so anyways it's a great book rocky nook is my publisher i love working with rocky nook and if you live in the united states i'll send you a signed hard copy if you live outside the united states um i'm gonna have to send you an ebook because it's kind of spendy to ship books overseas without having those accounts so that's understandable hopefully that works for y'all i just i just checked it out on amazon it's 24 dollars there 20 bucks for the for the ebook so cool um shadow hunter in the chat says how you know if they don't win the book how can they buy it oh, there you so you can go to my website if you buy it off my website i'll send you a signed copy but all the other places where books are sold you can get it from amazon you can also get it from rocky nook's website and uh they currently have a like a 40 percent off deal i can't remember what the special code is but if anybody wants that special re price reduction code this week, um, send me an email directly and I'll get that to you. And what's your email? Uh, email is mike at visadventures.com. Visadventures. My business name is Visual Adventures. So my website's visadventures. So mike okay. at visadventures.com. Excellent. And that's from Rocky Nook Publishers. Yeah. And Rocky Nook. So visadventures.com, we can, we can find it there as well. Exactly. Awesome. Or just Google Mike Hagen and you'll see it out there. So. Right. Well, and our winner for that book is Sale 02878. Are you still with us, Sale? Please leave a new comment and say, yes, I'm here. Woo, woo. Because if you're not, I'm going to give it to somebody else. <laughs> and while we wait for Sale to tune in, our winner for the uh, Perfectly Clear Complete is, where'd she go? There it is, Grandma D. Grandma D, are you still here? Please leave another comment saying you're still here. And I'd like to send you a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete to help you make your pictures look their best. And uh, thank you both so much. Aaron, where can we find more of your work and and tune in and see what, what you're up to? Um, well, like you said, there's always stuff going on on Photo Focus, but you can also find me just AaronHolmstead.com or Aaron Homestead on Instagram as well. So. Thank you very much. And Mike, where can we catch up with you and follow stuff? 
Yeah, uh, website, visitventures.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Instagram, my, I think my handle on Instagram is Mike J. Hagen, Mike J. Hagen. And uh, you'll see most of my wildlife stuff over there on Instagram. So perfect. Anytime. All right. Well, I'll get back to you right away. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Grandma D is still here. So she won the perfectly clear complete. And Grandma D, you just need to send me an email, Levi at photofocus.com, and I will get that sent to you. And still looking, this is your last chance, sale. I think sales out. What's that? I think sales, he's no longer here. Sale has set sail. Yeah. <laughs> Can't blame you. But uh, so if sale is not here, then Shadow Hunter, are you still here? I'd like to, I'd like, I'd like you to get your hands on Mike's new book, Shadow Hunter. Tune in and say you're still here. <laughs> Meanwhile, my name is Levi Sim. I am a writer at photofocus.com as well as Aaron and Mike. All right, Shadow Hunter's here. Please send. Mike an email at mike at visadventures.com. You'll see it right there in the chat. And uh, um, cool. Grandma D, I also got your email. I've, I've hidden it from everybody else, but I have, oops. Oh yeah, here we go, I think. Yes, I've got your email, Grandma D. I will get you set up with perfectly clear momentarily and um, Check us all out at photofocus.com where we write educational articles for you to learn how to better your photography in all kinds of genres and aspects and, and methods. Um, we're glad you tuned in today and we're grateful to Athentech, the makers of Perfectly Clear, for sponsoring this podcast. And until next time, I hope you guys all get out there and make some new pictures and have a happy holiday. Happy holidays. Thanks, everybody.